Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And today I want to show you how to make this graduated half tone effect. So this is an interesting effect where the size of the dots is driven by the relative brightness of the input image. So let's take a look. OK, so here we are in Resolve and I'm going to make a new Fusion composition. I'm going to go with a frame rate of 25. Let's call this half tone and let's set the duration to be 10 seconds and then hit create and then double click to open it up. So I'm going to come over to the media pool and bring in my asset. So this is a clip from pexels.com and I will give you a link in the description. Now it's 4K and I don't actually want it to be 4K. So I'm actually going to create a new background. I'm going to come over to image, turn off auto resolution, which will allow me to set a custom resolution. And that's going to be 1000 by 1000. So then I can take my footage and merge it over my background. Now it's a little bit too big for our purposes. So let's go 4.47 for the size. And that's going to fit a little bit better. The only other thing I want to do is I want to chop off the first 150 frames. So I'm going to come to the trim on the media in and set that to 150. And then we'll get this bit of footage to work with. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add a new background node and I want to make this one white and I want to select the ellipse tool just to mask it off like this. And then I'm going to add a merge and we can bring our background into it, look at it and then we just invert the inputs. So command or control T. And I'm going to set the size of my merge to 0.75. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add a transform node. And I'm just going to rename this as XF because it'll make it easier just to refer to later. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the pivot to be zero on both X and Y. And I'm just going to reduce that size down to something like 0.025. So if we take a look at that, We've now got a little dot down there in the bottom left hand corner. So what we can then do is add a duplicate node. We'll take a look at that. So first of all, I want to create a row of dots along the bottom. And to do that, I'm going to link my copies to that transform size. So first of all, add an expression to the copies and we're going to type one divided by XF dot size. And you could see that gives us 40 copies. And then we want to add an expression to the center. So add an expression there, which gives us this default expression for the X and Y values. So what I'm going to do is after this first 0.5, I'm going to type plus and then XF dot size. So that's going to add the width of my little dot to the center. And now you can probably saw what happened there. We've got our bottom row of dots. And so then we can copy this duplicate and we can paste to make a new one. Let's take a look at that. Very simply here, we're going to remove that plus XF size on the X and we're going to add it to the Y. So plus XF dot size added to the Y. And you probably saw that suddenly we've got an entire grid of those little dots. So then what we're going to do is we're going to merge this back over our background. So I'm going to add a merge, grab my background, add it in there. And again, we just want to flip the inputs using command or control T. And what I can then do is take the output of this merge, which was our action composited over the background. And I'm going to use it as the effect mask input for this merge here. So let's take a look at that. So we need to come to settings for this new merge and swap the channel to luminance. And you can see what we've got. We've got our pattern of dots masked by the luminance of our video. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a blur and I'm going to set the blur size to five. Let's take a look at that. And after that, I'm going to add a brightness contrast and let's take a look at that. So I'm just going to adjust two things, one of which is this low value here. I'm going to set that to something like 0.4 and then the high value to 0.42. And you can see how we've now got that pattern of dots look much closer. You can see that the brighter areas of the video have larger dots and progressively smaller as, as we get into the shadows. So what we can do is make space before that blur and after this merge, and we can just drop in brightness contrast. And here 
we can adjust the whole balance of this. So if I adjust the gamma, you can see that I can get more sort of mid-range pixels in there. Increase the lift, you can see we get, get, get more as well. So really it's a question of what sort of balance we want in there. I think I'm going to go with something like that. So let's just come back to our transform here. And because we linked everything together, we can actually control the density of this grid pattern using this size control. So if I set that to 0.01, you can see we've got a much finer pattern of dots. Obviously that has a knock-on effect with our processing here. So we need to come back to our brightness contrast and just adjust these values like so. So that's a much finer look. So really between these two controls here, that size on the transform and this brightness contrast, you've got full control over the effect. But I should just point out that we can get additional control if we take this merge here and after it add another brightness contrast. So I'm just going to show you the final output while I adjust this one. So for example, if we adjusted the gamma here, you can see we get a slightly different way of adjusting the look than with our brightness contrast at the end of the flow. So that gives you additional control. So it is a very nice effect. And really it's just that little blur that we added, which we then scaled with our brightness contrast. And that's what gives us that effect of the various different sizes of dots, which vary in size according to the brightness of the original image. So hope that's been useful. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon.